to the red and white sails of the pirate ship from Peter Pan. There were the Mad Hatter teacups, Dumbo the Flying Elephant, and Sleeping Beauty's towering castle, to say nothing of Frontierland and Adventureland. Having enjoyed this Skyride preview, now let's go back to the entranceway and follow our dream through this Magic Kingdom step by step. To get into the park itself, you go through a short tunnel underneath the Disneyland and Santa Fe Railroad, and then the spell takes place. Children's faces looking up, holding wonder like a cup. This is the town square at the head of Main Street, USA, where all kinds of shops and friendly characters are found. Like this well-dressed sheriff keeping everyone on good behavior. Even the street cleaners are in uniform and they keep the place spotless. Our first stop was at the Disneyland City Hall to check in with our credentials as Scotch Tape Contest winners and to pick up four days worth of free tickets for all the rides. When we emerged, all of us in our special Davy Crockett jackets, what did we find greeting us but the famous Disneyland Marching Brass Band, all in bright red uniforms. What a welcome! Then Mary noticed the Disneyland news on the corner stand, and sure enough, today's headline read, The Barstow Family Visits Disneyland. That was enough to make anyone jump with excitement. We decided then that the children needed to have official Disneyland hats to replace their Connecticut sailor hats, at least for now. Dan and Dave bought space helmets, and Mary got a wide brim plastic shade hat. Our first ride was on the horse-drawn trolley car down Main Street, USA, reconstructed as it might have been half a century earlier. This was remember when time for grown-ups, and why aren't things like this today? Time for the kids. On the right we saw the Main Street Cinema, starring Rudolph Valentino and Vilma Banke in Valentino's last film, The Son of the Sheik. Across the street were the Carnation Ice Cream Parlor, the Bake Shop, the Penny Arcade, and the Candy Palace, with all kinds of goodies in every window and storefront. At the end of Main Street, there's a circular park from which branch out the four different major theme lands. This is where we said goodbye to the straw-hatted horse that had pulled our trolley. Over on the right, we found first of all Tomorrowland, with a special clock telling what time it was all around the globe. We took a thrilling simulated ride in the rocket ship to the moon and back. And remember, this was 13 years before humans actually did set foot on the moon. Also in Tomorrowland were miniature spaceships revolving at various heights. And then the drive-it-yourself Autopia. Now to pilot one of these little cars around the course, you had to be as tall as the bottom of this sign. David made it just by a hair, but poor Daniel wasn't high enough, so he had to find another activity while David went for a drive. This was grown-up fun for an eight-year-old. The next land we visited was Fantasyland, the entrance to which is through the many-turreted Sleeping Beauty Castle across a bridge over a protective moat. This fantastic kingdom has settings and rides from any number of different times and places and stories. Most of the attractions relate to a familiar Walt Disney movie or cartoon character. Danny's favorite was Dumbo, the flying elephant. He and his mother got into the seat behind the broad wing-like ears of the little elephant, and soon they were off and flying. The world goes round and round when you're up in the sky with an elephant. Here's how it looked to Danny and Meg as they sailed through the air on Dumbo's big ears. Hold tight now. Another way to go round and round is in one of the Mad Hatter's teacups from Alice in Wonderland. By turning the wheel, you make the cup whirl. 
and all you can see is a dizzying blur when you finally do stop spinning around you find yourself face to face with Monstro the whale right out of Disney's Pinocchio a canal boat takes you for a gentle ride through storybook land going right into Monstro's giant mouth despite these fearsome teeth however the whale doesn't really swallow you and when the boat comes out on the other end you pass by beautifully constructed miniature settings for favorite childhood stories here we see the houses of straw and sticks and bricks built by the three little pigs this is Raddy's place from Wind in the Willows and up behind is Toad Hall this house in the forest belongs to the seven dwarfs you can see all their names on the signpost these cobblestone streets tell us that this is Pinocchio's picturesque little village in Italy and finally looking up in the distance we see Cinderella's shining castle this brings us to the Casey Jr. circus train with specially constructed cars to carry different kinds of passengers the engine pulls the cars up and down over a series of nicely landscaped hills and valleys until they arrive at their destination and then from one car they unload the wild animals and from another the monkeys well after all this excitement we felt the need to go to the bathroom at first we didn't know where to go but then we saw the signs for Prince and Princess and we remembered that everybody in Fantasyland is a prince or a princess then it was time for lunch knowing that everything here is magic Meg had brought all of our meals wrapped up in this little plastic case so we all sat down on a bench and waited patiently while she took the lunch bag out of the case and carefully unfolded it careful now don't anybody push and sure enough out of the bag each of us took a nicely cooked cheeseburger and a carton of milk so we ate our full and restored our energy for the next part of our Disneyland adventure the third special land we visited was Frontierland which is entered through a stockade gate here the boys naturally had to exchange their Disneyland hard hats for the Davy Crockett's coonskin caps which had been brought all the way from Connecticut just for this occasion the first stop by David and Danny was the Frontier Trading Post Danny bought a pair of toy pistols too big for his holsters and Dave bought a lariat to go with his fringe worn jacket how would you like to go for a western stagecoach ride okay if we can sit up on top behind the driver and see how he manages not just two but four horses pulling us along past an Indian teepee village a water hole with a family of moose then across the painted desert with its giant cactus plants and underneath the great stone arch further on we pass a covered wagon on its way to Oregon and end up next to a pack mule train headed for the mines we didn't want to miss that either so we each mounted a donkey and took a ride up to a hillside where we could look out and see the Mississippi River steamboat the Mark Twain coming around the bend this was a large stern paddle wheel boat which circled Tom Sawyer's island where we also spent some time before finally moving on to the fourth and final special land adventure land imagine all of this in one great park notice the elephant tusks marking the entranceway to Adventureland here the boys traded back their coonskin caps for the more protective Disneyland helmets and now we were going to experience our most exciting travel adventure riding in a jungle river cruise ship down some of the world's most famous and dangerous waterways we were cautioned to keep our arms inside the boat but some of us still got wet from the spray as we went underneath a waterfall on the Congo River in Africa up ahead in the brush we could see a lion and then the head of a 